بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد قيام الليل إهعاء الليل is a great عمل ومقربة إلى ربكم amongst the greatest needs of men is to get this proximity and closeness to Allah Jalla Jalalu. Likewise, we want our sins to be forgiven wa makfaratun lissayyat. And more importantly, a person wants to abstain from guna and sins wa manhatun anil ithm. It prevents a person from perpetrating ma'asiyat. And it even benefits the external body wa matradatun lidda anil jasad. It repels and expels sickness and disease from the body. Imam Ghazali rahimahullah has explained that this Qiyamul Layl is seven types. First one, Ihya Kulil Layl, to make the entire night alive. And that was the habit of some of the Mashayikh, where they used to read Isha and Fajr with the same wudu. If we look at uh, many of the Tabi'in, Sa'id bin Musayyib, Rahmatullah alayhi, who was born two years into the Khilafat of Umar radiallahu and, and was regarded as the most knowledgeable of the people of Medina of Halal and Haram. He was a faqih, a jurist, and he used to read his Fajr in Isha with the same wudu for 40 years. Likewise, Fudail bin Ayaz used to read Fajr and Isha with the same wudu for 40 years. He passed away in Makkatul Mukarrama. Then if you look at Wayb bin Ward, he used to read also Isha and Fajr with the same wudu for 40 years. Rabi bin Khaytham Hakam other great, great luminaries, Abu Sal, Sulaiman, Ad-Darani, Ali ibn Bakkar, Malik ibn Dinar, Sulaiman al taymi Yazid al-Raqashi, Habib ibn Abi Thabit, and many others. This was their routine to liven the night completely. As we heard previously, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullah alayhi, it is said about Harth that he was among those people who used to read Salat al Isha, then come home, read two rakat Salat, his food would be brought, and he was told to prepare for meals. He would look at the food and say, You know what, give me, give me two more rakats. When you finish that, Usalli Aidan Rakatain, let me read another two. فَلَا يَزَالْ يُصَلِّ رَكَاتَيْنِ He would continue reading two rakats upon two rakats until the time of morning. And he used to, as if his Isha and Sehri was one. Means he, his supper and his Sehri was one meal. So that was the first level. The second level is where a person spends ibadat in half the night. So if we have to say, example, a night comes in at 8 p.m. and Fajr comes in at 5 a.m., we have a nine-hour night. So in this scenario, a person sleeps for one-third the first three hours. So let's say he sleeps till 11 p.m. Then he gets up for that half of the night, which is four and a half hours, from 11 to 3.30 then, 3.30 to 5 is a moment where he sleeps again. So he spent out of the nine, four and a half hours in Ibadah. Number three, a person spends one third of his night in Ibadah. So in the same scenario, a person sleeps for the first half of the night. So, till 12.30, then he is awake till 3.30, which is three hours of the nine hours. And the last one-sixth, which is 3.30 to 5, 
he sleeps. So one third of the night, the last one sixth, he sleeps. That was the third. So Aisha radiallahu anha explains that Nabi alayhi salam used to spend that part of the night and then if there was a need then he would sleep or he would be intimate with his family. So the last part of the night so he slept the first half and the last one sixth and he was awake for one third of the night. Now the of Aisha radiallahu مَا أَلْفَيْتُهُ بَعْدَ السَّحَرِ إِلَّا عَلَى نَائِمًا That Nabi alayhi salam used to sleep at the time of Sari. So the Mashaikh say and amongst the Sahaba who have the opinion that it is Sunnah to sleep قبل السب, before Fajr time comes in Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu and other sahaba as well as other mashayikh who have the opinion that a person should sleep on that last portion of the night. So a person should see and should try to come onto a specific routine and a habit where we fix our time. These are the times that have been stipulated. And uh, the habit of Dawood alayhi salatu was salam was, he would stay awake one third of the night from the second half and sleep the last third. So one third of the second half of the night and sleep the last third as well. Then the fourth type was where a person stays awake one sixth of the night and that will be in the last half of the night in the last half of the night so one six which is equal to one and a half hours so that's before the last six so if we calculate an hour scenario of eight to five then that one six would be from 2 a.m. to 3 30 a.m. Because that is the second half of the night and before one-sixth of the termination of the night from 3.30 to 5 where the last sixth ends. Then number five, a person does not fix a time. You don't fix your time for tahajjud. So in different riwayat about Nabi Ali Salatu Salam as well, uh, Umay Salma radiallahu anhu says that Nabi alayhi salam used to read, then used to sleep, then used to get up and read, and then sleep again. So, a person before sleeping makes ibadah until he feels he is tired, then he rests, then he gets up again and do as much as he can and then sleeps again. So you will have two sleeps and two standings. And according to Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi This is the most difficult but most virtuous. And according to him this was from amongst the routines of Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. And it was said about him مَا كُنْتَ تُرِيدُ أَنْ تَرَى رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَائِمًا إِلَّا رَأَيْتَهُ If you want to see him standing awake at night, you would see him all the time. وَلَا كُنْتَ تُرِيدُ أَنْ تَرَاهُ نَائِمًا إِلَّا رَأَيْتَهُ And if you want to see him sleeping, you would find him sleeping. So a balanced would be that a person does both. And that was the routine of Ibn Umar رضي الله عنه and many Sahaba. And many tabi'in as well. So, Imam Ghazali explains that the, the standing of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam 
was not fixed كان يقوم نصف الليل أو ثلثه أو سدسه نبي عليه السلام sometimes would spend the whole night sometimes half the night sometimes one third sometimes one sixth as well and he said this ayah of the Quran is proof of that تقوم أدنى من ثلثي الليل ونصفه وثلثه so that was his routine and habit of Nabi alayhi salatu wassalam. Then number six, that a person reads just two or four rakats. Just two or four rakats. So whatever time you can manage, whenever it is in the night, as has been mentioned, salli min al-layli wa law qad rahal bishatin. Read, tajud, spend time in the night, even if it may be the duration when you milk a cow the others the duration means very short span of time a limited amount of time whatever you can manage even if it's two rakats or four rakats and imam ghazali says that this is the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a person does this also and it is allah's favor that he'll be regarded as the people of tahajjud He'll be regarded as the people of Qawwamul Layl, Qiyamul Layl. Those people who qualify under this category. And the last is a person before Subhas Sadiq, before the time of Fajr coming in, that last one sixth of the night, whatever time a person can manage, at that time he gets up and he spends it in Ibadah and worship. So, these are different, Imam Ghazali has listed seven different ways which the Salaf, Mashayikh, Sahaba, Tabi'in, they used to spend their nights. A person at least, if he can not quantify of a great magnitude, then at least start from the two or four rakats after Isha Salat when we read our three and two. Let us read another two before we sleep. Make it a routine. Imam Al-Sin Khan Sahib used to say that you make Salat to Tawbah, Ya Allah, I never spend my life and my days in the past properly. Salat Al-Hajjah, Ya Allah, tomorrow give for Tawfiq, to spend it properly. Salat, Istikhara, Ya Allah, whatever good and decisions I need to make in the rest of my life, you guide me in deen and dunya. If he made wudu, Tahit al-wudu. If he's in a masjid, Tahit al-masjid. Salatu shukr, Ya Allah, all the bounties that you have granted me, Ya Allah, I am grateful. So in this one, two rakats, minimum, let us start with that, then increase and see wherever Allah gives us tawfiq. Habiba al adawiya it was her routine that she used to spend the night in Ibadah, and she used to say, Ilahi kad gharatin nujum. Allah, people are sleeping, the skies are visible with the stars. وَغَلَّقَتِ الْمُلُوكِ أَبْوَابَهَا And the kings and the affluent people have locked their doors, even have gone to bed. وَخَلَا كُلُّ حَبِيبٍ بِحَبِيبِهِ And every lover has gone in seclusion with their beloved. وَهَذَا مَقَامِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْكِ يَا اللَّهِ I love you and you my beloved. That's why I'm standing before you. ثُمَّ تُقْبَلْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهَا Then she spend the entire night in Ibadah. وَطَلَعَ الْفَجْرِ And when the morning came, she used to say, إِلَهِ هَذَا اللَّيْلُ قَدْ أَدْبَرَ يَا اللَّهِ This night has passed. وَهَذَا النَّهَارُ قَدْ أَسْفَرَ and the day has come, فَلَيْتَ شِعْرِي أَقَبِلْتَ مِنِّي لَيْلَتِي If only I knew you had accepted my ibadah tonight, I would rejoice. أَمْ رَدَتَّهَا عَلَيَّ Oh, you have refuted. You have not accepted my ibadah. Then I will go in remorse and I will strive harder. And I will work harder. And I will fortify my ibadah. But I don't have a clue, Ya Allah, whether it's accepted or rejected. So I will continue striving, hopeful that you will accept 
thus knocking on your door, because (_min ju dika wa karamika_) because I know that you are the one that is all generous, and you are the one that is noble, and you accept from your servants, so I will continue striving, hopeful of your mercy." He said about Mu'adha al adawiyah that uh, when the day used to come, she used to say, هَذَا يَوْمِ الَّذِي أَمُوتُ فِيهِ That, Ya Allah, this is a possible that this day I will die and I will pass away. Since I'm not sure that I will live today or I will pass away, فَمَا تَتْعَمُ حَتَّى تُمْسِي She would spend her entire night till from the daybreak till the evening she would spend it in Ibadah. فَإِذَا جَاءَ اللَّيْلُ And when the night used to come, then she should say, يَا اللَّهَ هَذِهِ لَيْلَةِ الَّتِي أَمُوتُ فِيهَا It's possible that tonight my ruh will leave me. So she would spend now the entire night in Ibadah, standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a person has a value of every breath, they have a value of every moment, if they have a value of every second, then a person will spend their life properly. Otherwise, we will look for opportunities where we can spend our nights in ghaflat and negligence. It is said about Safwan bin Sulaim that he never placed his sides of his body on the earth, means he never reclined or rested on the floor for over 30 years. For over 30 years. Why? Because he took an oath. La yada'u jambahu bil ard. He said, Ya Allah, I'll never put my body on the ground. I will never rest. I will never lie down. He took an oath on Allah until his last breath which 30 years have elapsed. And when he was on the throes of death and the pain and the difficulties of death overcame him, he was seated. So his son was there. And he said, Ya Abati, Law Wada'ata Jambaka. He said, Oh my father, you are in the last moments of your life. Now I think so. You are ma'zur and you are excused to lie down and die on the earth. So Azad Safwan replied, Idan ma wafaitu lillahi. If I lie down now, I've contravened the transaction, the pledge I made with Allah. So it is said, he passed away while he was sitting. He passed away while he was sitting. So even in the moments of death, forget disobeying Allah. They didn't even want to cause any blemish on their reputation. May Allah give us tawfiq. We finished five parts. This was the final sixth part of the Hajjud. We tried to summarize it as much as possible. Otherwise it would have gone into 10 or 11 parts. But it's not about be having long, long lectures and fluent orators. But we need good listeners. A simple word, a simple statement is sufficient. If a person is a good listener, the amal for today is to see how we can be part of serving the creation of Allah. It will be told on the day of Qiyamah it makes sufuf and those people that are going to Jannah it will be on the lines of Jannah and the people that are going to Jahannam will be in their lines. And a person will recognize that person. Did you not give me water? He said, yes, yes. For yashfa'u lahu. He will intercede on his behalf and take him into Jannah. Likewise, he will pass another person. And he said that, you know, remember you gave me some work and I did it for you. He said, yes, yes, you will in the street and take him into Jannah.